welcome, welcome, welcome. You are tuned into Love and Love Podcast. This is your girl, Sasha. And I'm bringing you the sauce. We are here, we are here, episode five. Oh, this journey is just taking off. I'm so glad that you stuck with us and um, that you're pushing through. Um, I know that uh, so far it's been difficult um, for me. Um, I could say that the difficulty comes with Uh, the self-reflection and really just being honest with ourselves right Um, like paying attention to kind of where you are on this journey because it's it's a journey right Um, and just kind of being honest with yourself and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today is really have you done the work um and if you haven't it's time to unplug and really do the work because one of the things that we have to acknowledge is that if you are all clogged up right with all your mess you can't possibly spot someone that it has a lot of mess going on themselves, right? And so you find yourself in some situationships, all right? And so we are um, decluttering our lives. And part of that process is putting in the work, right? So that we could clear our own thoughts, clear our own minds, right? Being that state of being where we're looking constantly looking inside, right? Having an introspective view on who we are, what we desire, right? And setting our intentions on those desires. And so today we're going to be just kind of exploring that a little bit. And um, I want, I want as we go through this, um, just this process, right? For you to just kind of take in what I'm saying and, and, and really just kind of let it sit for a minute, right? Um, Just let it sit and just kind of process it and just take some time to really do some self-reflection and, you know, let's work through this together. All right. Because remember, this is a process. This is a journey that we're going on together, right? You and I, and we're going to be working through it. And we're going to get stronger together at the end of it. And so um, so in thinking about have you done the work, right? Um, the first thing that needs to be addressed really is this like what are the barriers that are most common to us finding um, love, right? And in kind of preparing for this this, uh, conversation, I started really thinking about that, right? What are the things that have really prevented me from like being in love and having long, um, strong, lasting relationships, right? And as I went through this, you know, one of the, some of the things that I thought about within for myself is um, where I've had like past relationships, right? Where I've kind of carried on that hurt. I didn't take time to myself to heal, And that interfered a lot with uh, my ability to love because 
I was so scared of getting hurt that, you know, the, the moment any inclination even came close to me, um, being hurt, I was out of there, man. I was like, you know, block and delete (laughs) without recourse. Um, and I laugh and I giggle about that just, just to keep it light. Um, but that's an issue. That's something that I had to work through that I, I identify that was an issue. Um, something else that, that I had was, um, had to kind of get past was anxiety. Um, anxiety played a, a huge role in my journey. Um, and it, it just kind of took legs in so many different ways. Um, for example, uh, you know, going into a relationship, right. Um, I would just kind of kept a safe distance, right? I wouldn't get too close because if I got too close, um, it was like that fear, right? That, that fear just kind of drove an an immense amount of anxiety, uh, within myself that, um, kept me from entering into a relationship, Um, another way that anxiety played a role in my life was, um, I would be in a relationship. I would be very jealous because I was scared. I was, I was scared that I couldn't trust this person. You know, um, it's like you're in a relationship and you're like, man, this is too good to be true, you know? And so you just kind of allowed your anxiety to just get the best of you and to, it just eat at the relationship, right? Um, that relationship capital just dwindled away because of the reactions I was having based, you know, coming from that place of being anxious. And so um, one of the things that I have learned through this process is that When you're anxious, it clouds your judgment, and that's any emotions, right? So as a lawyer, um, one of the the things that, like, we're often trained is to control our emotions, right? That's why you see this, everybody always says, like, lawyers are so stoic, right? Um, Because we're, we're, we're trained to control our emotions, right? Um, and it's because when you have that intense emotion, your judgments are clouded and you make very irrational decisions that you later regret. And so the same thing goes for anxiety, right? It, um, it's such an intense emotion, right? That it clouds your judgment because, Something that I have experienced when it comes to anxiety is that it's not just like a mental thing, right? You physically feel distress. Um, you know, like it's like, oh my gosh, it's been five minutes and 26 seconds since he called, right? And you just get this immense feeling in your stomach, right? So, it goes from just being that mental feeling to this like physical feeling of distress. And that's very difficult, you know, if we kind of allow those things to take place, they will inhibit us on this journey that we're on. And so we have No, that's so that's one of the, you know, that's like the second thing that really like got me like off course. Right. And kind of kept me into this, this, this cycle. Right. Um, And so that's something that I have learned and I have identified and actively worked towards that, like work towards bettering that. And you know, and just kind of like lingering around the issue of anxiety for a bit, you know, this is something that a lot of us struggle with, right? A lot of us struggle with anxiety. And, um, 
you know, in one way or shape, form or the other, right? And it can manifest itself in so many different ways, you know, where, you know, you feel um, insecure, right? You're constantly looking for, for safety and support in your relationship. Like you need to be needed. You need to, you need to be interacted with consistently, right? Um, cause it's, it's just this fear that if, if I don't hear from the person for 24 hours, right? It must mean that all worlds coming to an end, right? Um, and not, and that's just being dramatic, but being realistic about it, you know, um, that is something that is often the case. We, we date, right. We go on dates and, um, you know, we're kind of like, oh, well, you know, we, we are talking and we're vibing and we're doing all of these things. Right. And, um, he disappears for a day. Well, man, like so many things and in, in looking at it, like realistically, right. Um, so many things could happen. I know for me, sometimes I get so caught up with work that it's just, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I don't, I haven't mastered balance yet. Right. Um, so there's so many things that could be going on why he didn't call or why he didn't text or, you know, um, but we get so wrapped up in our emotions that we just kind of go into this whole reactive mode. Right. And so, you know, we, we're, we're constantly just kind of building on responses on the responses based on our own, um, created narrative of what is going on. Right. Um, then we become fearful, you know, of how to proceed. And so there's just a ripple of, um, negative, um, things that comes from that. Right. And so one of the things that I would like to encourage you to do is to, if you have, if you identify within yourself that you struggle with anxiety in relationship, um, take time out to just constantly reflect on that. And, you know, if you need to seek help, seek help. You know, I am a huge proponent of therapy. And you will hear me say this over and over and over again and over and over and over again because, you know, I therapy, one, it saved my life. Two, it allowed me to become very self-aware, right? So it's like, it's not that you go to therapy and you're like all healed and it's like <laughs> you become this, you know, perfect human being walking around. No, it doesn't work like that, you know, but you become self-aware. You know how to identify um, when th- when you're being triggered and you also know how to self-correct. And that's what therapy teaches you. It teaches you how to manage yourself, right? And manage your emotions because we are who we are, right? Um, and, you know, we, we are dealing with years in some cases, right? Of um, like whether it be trauma, whether it be conditioning to, to, to feel a certain way or think a certain way, you know, um, we're all, we all deal with this, right? It's just part of our human makeup. And so just, you know, um, if you identify that within yourself, take time to address that. You know, I had to really go back to therapy and to deal with that because that was something that I struggled with, you know? You know, the, the issue of like past hurt and bringing that into the relationship, as I mentioned before, is that number one, you know, that was like nothing compared to my anxiety, you know, um, just kind of like share something personal. Um, one thing that I had to learn how to manage anxiety in relationship was because while I was anxious, right? So I went from 
having this space of I'm anxious, so I'm acting out in the relationship, right? Um, calling, like, you know, just unsettledness, right? Um, to a place where, you know, as I was growing, I'm like, okay, well, I can't be acting out, right? So I started holding that anxiety internally, right? Um, and I would do things like, you know, I would eat, like, um, you know, to try to soothe myself, to make myself feel better, you know, um, work out, just anything to kind of manage myself. And it was just, it was, it was just kind of, instead of dealing with the anxiety, it was just kind of replacing it. So it's like that momentary fix and then it was right, right back in full force next time I was triggered, right? So the reason why I mentioned that is that it's really important if that is you, for you to really see counseling because I realized that this is not something that I can manage on my own. I needed help to be able to navigate that space, Right. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with seeking the assistance of a professional that is trained to navigate a specific space. We are so often like put off by the thought of therapy. For some reason, we associate being there, like being, you know, being treated by a therapist with some, with weakness. And it's really not. Because if you are sick, right, you're going to just Google, you know, how to get better. No, you're going to go to the doctor, right? You, the reason why you go to a doctor is because you entrust that specialist who specialized, went to school to specialize in the signs of the body, right? How to get the body better. So that's why we go to the doctor, right? Um, we go to the dentist for the same reason. You know, you go to lawyers for the same reason. You go to accountants for the same reason. We need to normalize going to therapy. If you have identified something in your, in your mental health that you are coping with, right? Coping with. And, I, and, and that is something that I want to stress because we shouldn't just cope. We have to address it. We have to heal. Let's get out of this whole idea of I do this to overcompensate for that, right? Let's, let's get into the habit of I'm going to address this issue head on so I could heal because this is a journey. And I mentioned in episode one that, hey, <laughs> there's going to be some not feel good moments, right? And the this part of the journey is one, you know, for the next couple episodes, we're really going to kind of get in deep below the surface, right? We're really going to have some moments of like, you know, exploring within ourselves, right? And, and so I want to encourage you, if you are dealing with anxiety, to take time out of your day and seek that help because it's going to make an incredible difference in the way you date, right? And the way you operate in relationships. And so, um, so the next thing, part of my journey that I felt that, um, kind of I've balanced those and, and, you know, I, I, I still, you know, every now and again struggle, um, not necessarily struggle, but it comes up, but I know exactly what it is when it comes up and I know exactly what I need to do, you know, um, for me personally, it comes up when I'm not taking care of myself, when I get too busy, because um, we all do, right? I know I sit here and, and I tell you that, 
this is what you're supposed to do, but I don't do it all. I don't do it as, uh, you know, like every single time. Right. Because like we're all on the potter's wheel we're we're all imperfect. Right. And so, um, but I know exactly when I'm not doing it and I know exactly what the feelings are and I am first to tap out. I don't care. The sky could be falling. Okay. If, you know, if I am at my, if that I'm at that place, I tap out and I take care of myself. And that's really what it's about. Identifying when you need to just tap out to take care of yourself. And so the, um, the next thing that I found, you know, as a barrier, um, in my journey, right. Is, um, not knowing what I want. Right. So up until late, I really didn't know, like I had an idea, right. But I wasn't really sold on like the specifics of what I want. And so that is something that I've really kind of start taking time to make sure that I explore. And um, I had a conversation with a good friend of mine and um, one of my best friends. And, you know, we were just talking and I said, you know what, like, I, you know, I really need to like, write it down and be specific, right? It's kind of going back to that biblical principle, write it down, make it plain. If I am going to be on this journey to find my husband, right? Um, I, well, I don't want to say I want to find him because Lord knows I don't want to find him. I want him to find me, <laughs> right? Um, because of that's, that's structured within my belief system. Um, so if, but if I'm on this journey, cause I think I'm on this journey of more of a self reflection and an evolution of myself. And so if, if I am on this journey, right. And my destination is love. I need to, I need to be specific. I need to know exactly what it is that I'm looking for, right? Because it's like, if I'm going, say, because even when I'm going hiking, right? I love going hiking. And um, even when I'm going hiking, right? I just don't wander wherever, right? I mean, there's a beginning part of the trail and then there's the ending part of the trail right there is a specific destination I know there's you know I, I don't know exactly what I'm going to come across right um but I have I have a clear idea and I think it's kind of the same thing when you're on this journey to find your your mate or you know, just to find that love is you have to be clear on what it is that you want. Right. And so, um, because one, one of the things that I have found and I had that, that this making a list, a, a specific detail list and, and ladies, I'm not talking about like, Oh, he got to be like six one and, you know, he got to like have blue eyes and, 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 you know, I'm not talking about that type of, I'm talking about like strong, like characteristics, right? Um, you know, um, the, the, just kind of imagining, imagining yourself, um, with this person, right? Like you're married to this person. What does he look like? Right? Um, how does he make you feel inside? You know, 
um, looking at him objectively, right? How does he operate day to day? What are his values, right? What are what are the things that really take him off? Like what makes him angry? What makes him smile? What makes him laugh? Those things, right? Who is he to his core? Can you identify that? Because that's important. And one of the reasons why I find that is important is because it helps you in the process of eliminating, like, or find, of kind of um, evaluating, that is, compatibility. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to just accept whatever, right? And then you go down on this journey further on dating process and then you find out that this person doesn't make you happy because you haven't taken that time to really really imagine this person right really imagine this person like and 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 you know that helps you through this process right Because we want to go back to something that we talked about in episode two is the power of manifestation. You got to see it before you see it. I know you heard that one before. You got to see it before you see it. You have to see him before you see him. You got to know what he looks like. How does he carry himself? You know, what's his past look like? Like, I'm talking about that detail, okay? What does his past look like? What does his relationship with God look like? Right? How is he, is he a church going man? Right? How is he interacting with, with, with others? You know, What's his involvement like in the community? Like, you have to see him before you see him. And so I just want to bring those to you and hope that it, you know, it, 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 it actually brought some value. Um, again, because... You know, I feel that um, we go through things in our journey for the reason of learning and we learn and we share, right? What I go through in, in my journey may not be the same that you go through in your journey. And you could teach me in the same space that um, you could learn from me. And so um, I'm so glad that, you know, you you are still here and st- sticking it out, right? Because these are really deep um, issues, right? We're, we're going below sub-level, all right? <laughs> and each episode, we're going to get a li- little deeper. Um, but fun times are ahead, right? Fun times are ahead. Um, because again, the whole process that we're, we're on this journey for and this part of the journey specifically is to declutter our mind and our bodies and our environment, right? Our bodies, our body, our mind, our body, and our environment decluttering so that we could prepare the space for love. So Until next time, I will see you next week. We're going to have an amazing talk. Oh, we have the wonderful and amazing um, best friend of mine coming to talk. When sisters talk, we have an amazing chat next week. And so um, we're going to be diving into this issue um, just to kind of start off and then we're going to be touching into some other issues that just concerns, um, like doing the work, 
right? Understanding what that looks like and um, talking about like attachment styles, right? What is your attachment style and how do you learn your attachment style and what role does that play in your relationships, um, both, you know, personal and professional, you know, and so we're going to be talking more about that. So until next time. Yes, yes, that concludes another amazing episode. I am so happy that you have stuck out with me on this journey. And I look forward to being here next week in the same space with you sharing great energy and bringing, uh, elevating our vibrations. And so until next week, I want you to have an incredible week. Stay true to yourself. And remember, the more you pour into you, the more you'll have to pour into others. <laughs>